Welcome back to Little Monkeys and Me. This is episode 17. Welcome back to Little Monkeys and Me. I am the maker behind this channel. I am Fernanda. I live in North Carolina with my husband, three kids, and our dog Luna. If you are a return viewer, I'm so happy to have you back. I enjoy your company um, and I hope you enjoy mine. I love um, the comments that you leave and just the overall back and forth that we have either on Instagram or here on YouTube. It's really, really nice. If you're brand new, well, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. This is my little channel where it's mostly a knitting channel. Once in a while, there's other crafts. Depends on what I'm into. I also like to sew. Um, I just haven't a whole lot lately, but um, there is a project coming. Not today, but it's coming. Uh, but it's mostly knitting. It's mostly a knitting podcast. So if it's your first time, then I hope you enjoy it. I hope you have something to drink. I don't today. Um, I was going to make something warm, but it's actually quite warm and I am wearing something warm, which I might have to take off later. But yeah, have your knitting because these are always long. I usually, um, I usually record once a month. That's kind of what works for me. I'm a homeschool mom and most of the time I'm just really busy and I gathering all the things, having the kids you know, and not interrupting for a day. Um, that's kind of what works for me. Uh, I love, you know, we each do what we can and what we feel comfortable with. So let's do a little recap of what has happened the past month. Um, my husband ended up in the hospital. He's okay now, but that was, it was, it was, it was a big, it was a big thing, but he's okay. So that was, that was good. Believe it or not, I didn't feel like knitting while I was at the hospital. I think I did a few rows here and there, but I think my mind was somewhere else and I couldn't concentrate. So there were some, you know, you would think, oh yeah, hours upon hours sitting. Well, that, it was not fun. It was not fun time to like just sit and knit. Um, but he's all right, he's home, he's 100%. So he's back to normal. Uh, my my little son, well, not my little, <clears throat> my oldest son, who I think is still little, he went on that camp out and he did wear his socks that I made him and he loved them. What else? Uh, I did finish the muscle barrel hat. So my husband did wear that to the camp out also. And the poppy cardigan that I have notes, by the way. Otherwise, this would be twice as long and I would forget things. And I always, even then I forget things. So welcome to my craziness. This is how it is. I looked down my notes, still go off tangents, still a very long podcast, but you know, you get what you get <laughs> with me here. Uh, my The poppy cardigan that I was wearing last episode, I'll put a picture here. It is live, the adult one and the children one is also live. If you want to, um, if you want to knit it. I know lots of you were excited about it so it is ready to go and of course I as many as my other friends who have um, podcasters out there I think we all feel the weight of the world um, as times all the things that are happening. Uh, I feel like there's always something happening in the world and there's always somebody to pray for and and though, you know, we can give money, we can we can give to charities. I think the biggest thing that we can do is prayer. And pray, um, sometimes it feels like it's not enough, but prayer is quite powerful. I have a big testimony of prayer and how it can lift you up. And I mean, if you've ever gone through something very hard, and you knew people were praying for you. You could feel that prayer. It could really lift you. It can give you hope. It can give you, it can make you feel God's love. 
So yes, we're all here far away from maybe being able to help anybody who's hurting right now. But I do believe in the power of prayer. So that's what I've been doing lots of lately. So I hope that this brings you some joy and some hope that our prayers can be answered. So let's move on to our, our finished objects. As you can see, I am wearing one of them. Last episode, I absolutely forgot to show you this. It had come, I was so excited to show it to you and I filmed the whole thing and I didn't show it to you. So I think this was the January update and I don't even remember the name. I will probably put it up here. Not that I know how to pronounce it and I don't look it up. So, but look at this green. It is, as you can see, fantastic. It is, it is the green. I mean, I love this green. It is one of my favorite shades of green. I love this deep green. And as, you, as you'll as you see, I kind of went green crazy during February, like lots of things green. And this one was one of them. I cast it on um, this the day after we came back from the hospital. So I've been wanting to, I got it for a few days, but you know, uh, there were other things on my needles and also um, I like to prepare so this is new to them, by the way, if you didn't know. This is made um, in in Sweden by Caroline and her husband, Knut, and, and then their team. They have a team now. And I am a patron, so that is makes it a little bit easier for me to buy it, because if you're a patron, then you get a, um, you, you get to buy it a week or two before the rest of the world you get a password and there's a lot less people buying you still have to be quick because some some colors do run out i believe the red one there was a red one um with this collection and i think that one might have run out before the world could buy it but um you know if you're considering being a patron they open up sometimes but they're not always open for patrons and I don't know how long I'll be a patron. Uh, I'll see. I think this summer will be a year and then I'll reconsider whether I want to keep going. Mostly because, you know, just give somebody else a chance and, um, you know, giving my money to some other maker too. So, so this color, gorgeous. And um, I, when I saw that color, this was what I wanted to make. So let me show you what it is. This is the Diagon Alley Jumper by Fable Knitwear. Are you surprised? I have made many of her patterns now. I have made several for my mom, for my mother-in-law, and now two for myself. And I have to say, um, every time I make her patterns, they do bring me quite a bit of joy. And making them a new today, it's even nicer. So let's talk about this before I need to take it off. It is, it is warming up. Spring is coming, which is also um, makes me quite happy. Though I have to confess, I didn't hate winter. I don't even know who I am. Where is Fernanda? I don't even. I'm this new person, and I think it has a lot to do with um, having more knitwear, like nice, good knitwear to wear. I know that sounds silly, but when you're not freezing all the time, you things are much nicer. <laughs> so the fact that I wasn't freezing all, all winter long because I had cozy socks and sweaters and cardigans to wear and shawls and mittens and all the things that I've been making lately for myself. Well, that's a big difference when you go outside completely wrapped up and then you're like, oh, I can't, I can't sustain, like I can do this. But let's go back to this tangent already. Okay, so this is the, let me get up a second so you can see how it fits. Um, I'll put also a picture. So it does, you know, my hip bone is like right here. So it's a little bit above it. I think it's meant to be a little bit shorter but I am short, so you might want to consider that. It is a cropped, 
cardigan and even though it doesn't I mean it still looks crop and it is still crop on me I think it's meant to be a, maybe a teeny bit crop more crop but um I'm short so but I don't mind this is kind of like the length that I want it to go with and so for me it works and I had made the juniper cardigan before or juniper jacket I think it's called and that one it's about it's the same length you're supposed to go to the same amount of centimeters and I like that length so I already knew so the best thing I mean she has she has uh, a picture with like the measurements so the best thing you can do is when you do this measure yourself figure it out how far you want to go because this it is done bottom up which means you start with the bottom uh, ribbing which is a twisted rib a one by one twisted rib and then and it's quite quite long it's I think it's like eight or nine centimeter centimeters uh, long and um, and then you start moving up there's waist shaping right here so you start going like this and then you put it aside when you get to the right uh, length that tells you in the pattern or the length that you want and then you go and start on the sleeves and you do the sleeves cuff and then you start going up and you do um you do increases to go like that and the cool thing with that is that you can go try them start trying them on so then you figure it out okay how much do you want i think i did my cuff a little bit longer i think it called for nine and i did 10 centimeters or something and the reason was, I think I kind of just went and I kept going and I didn't, I didn't want to rip back. And also, um, I don't know if I'm weird, probably I am, but maybe I'm not the only one. Sometimes I pass the amount that it tells you because I want to get to like an even or like a whole number or like, like all my rounds. Because I do count the rounds, especially if I'm making two things that need to be the same. I do like counting my rounds to make sure that I know exactly how many um, rounds it takes to make one exactly the same. So I would be counting on my counter and for example, it's like 28. I'll just go to 30 because I want the whole number. Or, you know, 23. I'll go to 25 because I want like a number. I, I am I'm weird. Either fives or tens. I... Please tell me I'm not alone. <laughs> Maybe I am all alone in this um, weirdness, but I think I made them a little longer because I wanted to get to like a whole number and also because um, I kind of was just knitting and watching something and I got distracted. So, it, and I went a little bit further and then, in, and then I was into those numbers that I, I was like, oh, I don't want to finish here. So then I went, I went ahead um, higher and I really don't mind because I think a nice, Gosh, there's still some hay. Sometimes I find some. Um, I, I like the long cuff. It looks really pretty. And then you go, so then you do both sleeves. I did them separately. I didn't do them at the same time. I have done sleeves at the same time because you can. You can just use a big long cable and you do magic loop and you do both sleeves at the same time. It's just that if you don't know um, about Nutanen, this is Anand Spun Yarn and working with it it's actually not hard i've gotten very used to it now and i know how to hold i know how to hold it and i can go really fast actually i can not as fast as my normal knitting but still really fast um it took me 10 days to make this sweater and i made a pair of socks in between i think i finished the sock but i still could go pretty quickly but it does break really easily so I really didn't want to have like so many things to manage this I did hold double so what I did is that um, I bought six plates and I used a little less than four which is actually really cool I'll tell you the amount exactly in a second so what I do is that I put both plates on the ground or on the floor and then I make a ball with both um with both strands or both threads together so then it's ready to go so I prepared that I think you know that one day when I wanted and then I cast it on the other tip that I can give you is that casting on sometimes is really tricky because 
depending on the cast on that you're doing a lot of times like if it's a long tail cast on um it is really hard to keep the tension with that and then not pull it so much that it'll break a lot of the time it will break and or you'll you'll do it so loose that you could see it so the solution that i have found i don't know what works for you but what works for me is that i do a backward loop cast on so then there is a lot less tension and it still looks really good that's what i did on on the sleeves and i did on the bottom and it worked really nicely and yeah you can't really tell the difference and you don't break the yarn so much so then you don't get as frustrated so after you finish the sleeves you're gonna join and this is my favorite part i don't know why but i get very excited and i know i, I don't know why i, I think it's it's you finally seeing like kind of come together and it's just really fun to see like different parts and then you bring it together and it's just really really fun um so yeah you're going to work that and then you're going to start working the raglan that you're doing which is right here this is a raglan and and at one point it'll tell you to start doing the puffy sleeves that you see you can omit this absolutely you just knit a normal sleeve like you wouldn't have to worry about this part if you want a completely flat um if you want the shape and the look of this because i really do love i make i love the shape of this color um it's not a boat neck but it's also not a super crew i don't know it's just really interesting it's a little square but not boat neck square and it's just really pretty and it like stands up on its own um i'll take it off in a minute and then i'll show you what it looks like um off but yeah so you do the puffy sleeves which i love i do like this um detail in her patterns but you can like i said you can omit it and then you're going to knit until it's time to work on the, the neck and here it is a folded neck so you knit then there's a pearl bump like a pearl um round and then you knit some more and then you fold it in and you sew it into it i did sew it you just need to be a little bit more careful than with usual yarn because you know it'll it'll break if you pull it too hard but what you need to understand is that it is really fragile but also because i'm trying to find the end of this um here i'll just pull a thing if you pull from really close as you can see i'm pulling really hard i mean it'll still probably break but this is really like you're not going to be pulling like this because the the bristles i mean like the the fiber has long they're very long um they're really long fibers so if you pull from far away it'll break like nothing but then if you have double and then you pull from really close together it'll it's almost breaking because it's still not spun but it's gonna take i was i was pulling very hard it's gonna take a lot more so to break it so when you want to have a little bit more strength um especially if you're going to be um if you're going to be sewing something i like to just get it in my hand <laughs> and then it kind of almost felt a little and it becomes harder well that's how i sewed i sewed this neckband i would get you know uh i would get that tail and i would just do it really hard you don't even need to add a spit to it um and look just completely and then it's really strong so then as you're pulling it's not going to break as easily so those are kind of some tips i am burning up so let me take this off all right i'm back um and here it is Whew, with me not wearing it it was getting warm in here as you can see the neck Oh, there is short row shaping, which I'll tell you when to do when to do it. I did uh, German short rows because those are my favorite. I find that the detail um, of the short rows is very, um, you can't notice it as much as compared to a wrap and turn. Those ones you need to be way more careful to make sure that you can't see the hole and that you can like 
pay, you know. So I think German show rows are really fun. I love doing German show rows. And it gives you a longer back, as you can see. This has been worn several times, so it's not like pristine, but you know, we're, we make these to wear. The little sleeve detail. I made the extra large and I think I could have gone with large. And it's funny because I said that last time about my juniper cardigan or jacket. And I said, oh, I could have probably gone with a large, but it's okay. And then I still did an extra large. Um, I'm usually a large or extra large in patterns. I went with the extra large. It fits perfect. Um, if I would have gone with a large, I think I just, I would have had maybe no positive ease or maybe a slight negative ease and it still would have worked because this is unspun yarn. So it's very fluffy and it gives, you know, as it is, um, the sleeves were perfect length and now they're a tiny bit longer just by the use, just by putting it on and off and, you know, it, that's just, you know, that's just life. But yeah, these are the sleeves and the color. As you can see, I, I don't know if you can see, but let me try to show you. This is where I was whipping it to the inside, attaching both sides. And I did put my little logo or my, uh, my tag, mostly because it's cute. Because as you can see with the show rows, you can absolutely tell which side is uh, the front and which one is the back, but it doesn't matter. I still love it. So let me see if I can think of anything else. I did put, um, I use less than four plates. So let me tell you exactly the amount that I use. It was 361 grams in total. And that's for an extra large hell double. So I still have two plates and a bit more left over. I haven't weighed it like to see exactly how much in grams, but I'm starting to get lots of, lots of leftovers. And I'm like, oh, what can I make? Maybe something color work or I'm not really sure. My mom is still asking for a Jimmy Bird jacket for herself. So we'll see. We'll see about that. Um, and um, I use the recommender needles. I did not swatch. The reason why I didn't swatch is that I figured it will fit. <laughs> I know that probably is like Fernanda. That's just, hear, hear me out. I made the juniper jacket with one uh, strand of Notodin. And that one was supposed to be like a fingering. Then this one is supposed to be a DK, I think. Um, yeah, it was DK. And so I held it double. And I've made plenty of her patterns and I get gauged quite easily with her patterns. So it was an educated gas and it worked. It was perfect. So, you know, I'm not saying don't swatch, but I'm saying if you know that it will work, then I didn't swatch. I just went ahead and started and I'm so happy with it. It is everything I wanted. I have lots of dresses that I wear to church or, you know, or just high-waisted pants or whatever. And... I knew that this green was going to go with a lot of my outfits. It goes with almost all the dresses I own and it will go great with so many. So this is going to be worn a lot, probably next year because, or at the, at the end of this one, as it gets colder again. Um, we're having that temperamental weather at the moment of like, I'm cold, but not really. And let me see where I can put it on the other table. Um, I'm, I'm really warm, but it was like 80 degrees last week, one of the days. And then we're having like 20 degree, like low temperatures. So it still doesn't know. It doesn't want to make its mind, make up its mind. So yeah, so that was my Diag Diagon Alley jumper by Fable Knitwear. I use a recommended size. I think it's four millimeters for the neckband and the, uh, like the... Uh, the cuffs and yes and then 4.5 millimeters which I believe is the 7 US 7 so US 6 and US 7 or 4 millimeters and 4.5 millimeters 
needles. I used my Chiagos. I love them. I use interchangeables a lot when I work with, um, I love my interchangeable set. So if you really want to invest on something, I would say that, I mean, I own a lot of them already because before I could afford an interchangeable set, I would buy, you know, one on its own. So I do have a bunch that are um, set. But I also love my interchangeable when I put together the whole entire at the beginning when you have the bot like the body and then you attach the sleeves. I like having a long cable so not everything is all scrunched up and you're like barely knitting. Um, and then when it gets to, you know, you're starting to decrease, you're going in a wrangling, you're going this way. That's when I just change my cable. I mean... I mean, you don't have to, you can also do magic loop, whatever. I like having the interchangeable. For me, it's, it was worth it. I mean, I got it as a present, but otherwise I would have bought it myself. So let's move on to the next finish item. I did show you this one last time, and this is the Muscle Borrow hat by Solda Teague. And this one I made for my husband. It has been worn a lot. My husband loves hats. He wears a lot of baseball caps. I don't know what they're called in your country, but they're like with the brim. I don't know. Baseball caps. That's why we call them here. Um, and he wears lots of those. He And then he has the other hat that I made him, that I knitted him last year. He wears that all the time. And now he has this. And I haven't, I haven't washed it since he went on the camp out. And it smells like campfire. And that's like one of my favorite smells in the world. So I'm not going to wash it because I love it and I don't mind it. And he loves it too. So this is it. And let me tell you, now I understand why everyone likes making this. If you like making socks, then make a muscle bear hat. This is making like a long tube and then you have an awesome hat on the end, which is really warm too. So let me show you how it, what it consists of. It consists of a tube. So you cast on on this side you cast on right here and i cannot remember the name of the cast on that they suggest but i end up doing one and i watched a video it was not difficult and it took a few times to watch the video and like slow it down but it's not difficult don't be scared it's really fine i did use three millimeter needles you get to pick I, I like I like the look of this fiber. It's very flop like flowy. It's not super rigid. Um, it is also nice to knit with, and this is fingering weight. So I used three millimeter, which gave me a gauge of seven stitches. It will tell you on the pattern. Obviously, this is a paid pattern, so I cannot tell you all the details. But it does give you okay. So you swatch, you don't swatch, but you swatch by knitting, and then you count. I think when you have like an an inch or an inch and a half you count how many stitches in that in one inch or yeah or one thing i can't remember it'll tell you how much and then you count how many stitches in that and then depending on what you get it's the numbers that you're going to follow i made an adult medium for him let me make sure yeah uh, adult medium I got seven inch, uh, seven stitches, and I used a three millimeter needle. I used Magic Loop, and so the way that it works is that it tells you how far until you like how far you knit before you start decreasing on the other side. Now, this is all like you can change it. It all depends on the length that you want. If you want a very slouchy hat, you can keep going. If you want a less slouchy hat, then you stop early. If you want almost no slouch then you can finish way before the way that I did it is that my husband wanted a little bit of slouch but not terribly slouchy so what I did is that I knit for a while and then I made him try it on obviously still in the needles it's like this tube and it's not all double like it's gonna be at the end but when I think I made him try it on when it was like around here and it was the perfect length so I knew okay that is that my halfway point that is when you can change to a different color so it can be reversible or it's when you know okay 
so how much is from here to here before the the decrease the increases stop because from here you start increasing on the other side you start decreasing and i i i measure that and i went the same amount to the other side so my total from from one side to the other it's about 20 20 inches or 51 centimeters or so and that fits my husband perfectly it is the ring length so i wrote it down because i think it's not gonna be the last one i make him so i wanted to make sure that he got one that he you know that fits him so yeah and then you put it inside out you don't have to you don't have to sew anything you just put it in and it's ready to go you can wear it you know you can fold the brim and you can wear it like that but it, he likes it like this and it fits so good and the colorway it doesn't have a name because it was from the oopsie sale from uh, sorella this is their sock base so it's like 100 percent. well not 100 percent. it is a blend of merino and uh nylon a solid um or their tonals and I think that's a pretty, pretty, pretty tonal. There was no pooling. I see zero pooling on this, which was really nice. And even if there was some, for a hat, it would have to be really bad pooling before I would even consider, um, like, not doing it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm picking and then, like, coming up with some sort of either um, alternating skeins or something to not have them. So it would have to be really, really bad. This is not, like you can't even, it's such a good green. It is a different green, as you can see. Hopefully the colors come out good, but it's still a really pretty green and he's very happy with it. I have this leftover. I actually weighed this and it was 99 grams. But they brought, you know, sometimes the skeins are not exactly 100. They sell them by 100, but they're not exactly 100. So I did have seven grams left over. So some of it went into a project and the rest will go, I think, into that project some more. But I wanted to show you how much I had left over. And it's really good. I mean, I'm so happy with it. I am planning another one with some yarn that I'll show you later. Um, I'm hoping that one doesn't pull because it is more, this is more of a tonal too. I mean, it's not meant to do a whole lot of pooling when you're doing tonals. Now, when you get a variegated yarn, that's when you have to start thinking, well, there is a chance. So I'll see how it goes. And like I said, it would have to be really like ugly pooling before I actually, before it actually bothers me. So let's move on to my next, my next finished object. We're moving to sock land now. Finished a sweater, finished a hat, and now there's socks. And there's three pairs of socks that I finished. So these are my favorite socks. Last time I showed you this yarn is the Monding. Uh, let me see what color is it. Mondim in color 305. So this is from a Portugal, this is 100% Port Port Portuguese wool. It does not have nylon. I have not worn these yet. And I'm excited now, now that I they come in here, I'm excited to show them to you and for me to try them. So these are my girl socks by Fibertails. This green, it is fabulous. As you can see, <laughs> lots of different greens, and they're all different greens, but these are all greens that make me actually quite happy. And this has more yellowy tone to it, but it is also has a lot of depth, and it's, it is, oh, it's rustic and toothy, and it, it was such a joy to knit this. So if you remember last year, I made the girl shawl and it had this detail of um 
it had this detail of like plants and so then she made a girl socks and um I did everything I mean I did this part to pattern and everything else was kind of just my own thing I did the 20 I did the 64 stitches which is um my standard like for me so 64 stitches and 2.5 millimeters I use my nine inch circulars because they're my favorite I did 20 rounds for the ribbing and I do two by two it's my favorite I love how it looks I do a German twisted cast on for the cast on it's elastic it gives you quite a bit of room and then I moved on to the pattern and after the pattern <clears throat> I decided to go I sometimes either do 30 for the leg or 40 and I, I think I went with 40 yes because the pattern was like 20 rows repeat like 20 rows and then I did 20 more I did a heel flap and gusset and I did my favorite heel which is the eye of partridge heel I don't know you can't see it that well on this but I'll show it to you in, in another one that I'm working on and you can see the heel a lot better I then I went for 60 this one I did a bit different I usually do 60 rounds from the when you pick up stitches all the way to before you do the toe and I do usually 60 and that fits perfect for me and then I do a toe and I decrease um a wedge toe until I have 16 stitches on each needle and then I kitchener close this one I did a slightly different um if you haven't watched Emma from uh Wooly Mammoth Company Wooly Mammoth Co she has a podcast too. She hasn't podcasted for a while, but um, she did put one up, which was really, really fun. I love watching Emma. And she was talking about how her socks get a bit felted and how she gives it a little bit more, a few more inches or not, maybe not inches, but maybe a few more centimeters uh, when she knits the foot. So when it felts, it'll come, you lose some of that length. So... I have never used socks that don't have any nylon in it and mine don't usually I'm not very hard on my socks but you know I wasn't sure so I did make mine 65 instead of 60 so it does give me um it gave me some centimeters centimeters extra and um we'll see how that goes I mean I don't know if that was enough but if they do end up felting then I will lose a tiny bit of um of length and but it won't make them shrink too much so that's kind of what what I um I decided to do I did um block these because I want to look nice and pretty and like I said these ones are Mondim and these are Portuguese brand let me make sure I say it correctly so my husband knows Portuguese he lived in Brazil for two years he served a mission for our church and he lived in Brazil for two years. And then my best friend, one of my best friends of all time, um, she's like the sister I never had. My friend Lily, she is from Brazil. Not Portugal, but they both speak Portuguese. They do say some words differently, but um, I wanted to make sure that I actually said it correctly. Because I know that we all want to say Retosaria Pomar or Retosaria Rosa Pomar, which is their the name of the brand but in all reality that's not how portuguese people say the r's so let me say one time it's retrosaria rosa pomar so usually the r's at the beginning and even sometimes at the end you do not say with an r or an r sound so it's more like a h sound so retrosaria rosa pomar and that's how you say that. Um, now, I do not speak Portuguese, so sorry if it wasn't a great accent, but we can say whatever. I mean, I like trying to get like the right pronunciation of things. Um, not always succeed, but I try. And so yeah, so these are my, and that's not even how you say it. It's like girl socks or something like that. I can't, I'm trying. All right, so these are it. I loved them. It's a great pattern. It's so much fun. 
you can still use almost like your vanilla recipe and you just put the little flowers in it and it turns out to be super duper cute. So let's move on then. I made some socks for my husband. I don't know if I had shown this yarn last time. Because now I'm thinking if I didn't show you the yarn, that means I have some more yarn that's new that it's not here. But I'll just show it to you when whenever I make those socks and I'll be like, hey, this was new yarn. Um, sometimes I forget the things I show you or the yarn that I've bought and, you know, you'll see it when I make something with it. This is the Regia. I don't remember the color because, well, I didn't have a name or if it did, I couldn't read it because it's not in English. But these socks are from my husband. And these are the Arna, Arna and Carlos, um, one of their designs. And it is, let me tell you the number. Oh, where is it? The color is 09137. And is the Arna, Arna and Carlos collection. And this is, these are so fun. I did make them matching. If you haven't used Regia, I have never used Regia. And if you haven't used their yarn, the way that theirs comes is you pull from the center. Well, I think you can do it either way, but I pulled from the center and you have like a yellow, I don't know, a few yards of that yellow, just like a yellow color yarn, which I saved to put into something else because it's perfectly good yarn. It just doesn't go with this project. And then you get to the white. So it says cast on when you get to the white, you knit your, your, um, your cuff with the white until oh, it changes color and then you start making the leg. Then you knit the leg until you see the white and then you do the heel. And I did uh, an eye of partridge heel. This is a heel flop and gusset. I do for 32 rounds and then I, I start turning. So you can see this is the eye of partridge heel, which is so pretty. Um, and then it tells you to knit the foot. And here's where, um, it changes for each person, depending on how long your foot is. There's quite a leftover white, but now if you have a very long foot, the white is going to start like halfway through your foot because my husband, I usually do a 70 round um from the pickups from your pickup gusset stitches and I do 70 and then I start the toe here um it, I had about I only did about 60 or a little less than 60 before I started with the white but you just keep going it doesn't matter um and actually it looks really good it's, it's fine it's just the white part is a little it's not just the toes it's a little bit further into the foot and it's fine so now if you want to make it even longer like I said, that white is gonna be even longer. So that is something that if you won't, if you don't like the look, then you might not want this yarn. And yeah, it was really fun. And then you, I finished the sock. The only thing I have to say that there is some dyeing that went on the white that it's like, it's not when I blocked it because these are not blocked. It was. It, it was, so it's like stain. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of blue and a tiny bit of that pink red that went on the white. Uh, it really doesn't matter that much. I mean, if it was some sort of, like if it was another project, then maybe I would mind, but I don't think it's meant to be like this. I think it's meant to be just white, but it's really not that big of a deal. Then, um, so then after you finish the one sock, you I just made a ball with the leftover white because you don't want to use that because that's not going to make you a perfectly uh, matching sock because these are matching, as you can see. You just pull all the white, you find, and then, then there's going to be a next, like a yellow, you know, a few yards of yellow. You get all that yellow and then that white, it's going to be for the next cuff. And then you just knit it just the same as you did the other one. So it was really fun. I love the color. My husband is so excited to be able to wear these now that I've shown them. Um, 
I didn't block them because he's just gonna wear them as soon as I um I don't always block the socks it sometimes when I want to or like if it's a lace or something like this that I really wanted to see how it was gonna look once I wash them um or um things like that but or if I'm gonna give them as a gift then I like to block it so make so it looks cute and that is that now the last bit the last thing I finished oh and for my husband I also use 2.5 millimeters and I do 60 stitches and start off six to four which is me so for him 60 and it fits perfect now here are my super fun March socks. So you can see, these are not blocked. I just put them here so you can see them better since it's just one color. And yeah, these are my March socks I already finished. And these are Unicorn Dew is the name of the colorway by Candy Shop Yarns. And you know I like her stuff. Um, and when I saw this colorway, I had to get it. So I bought it. And then when I was thinking of like, what color am I gonna make my March socks? This one just kept calling my name. As I was knitting it though, I was like, this would have been the perfect April socks because they scream um, Easter to me. I mean, these are absolutely Easter colors, but we can always have such I mean, I was like, no, I won these now. It doesn't really matter. I can wear them for Easter. Um, and they just brought me a smile every time I looked at it. Every time I pulled them out and I was knitting with them, I was like, I would show them to my husband. I was like, look, look how cute this is. And he's like, yeah, 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 those are cool. I have leftover. Um, I don't think I weigh these yet, but I have leftover to make my, do oh no, I did weigh them. It was like 60 or so. Um, so I have this much left. I don't like pulling from the center. I used to, I used to pull from the center a long time ago, but I hate it when you pulled it and like a big chunk came out and then you have to like wrap it around anyway. So it's called yarn barf or yarn vomit. And I don't like either term because I think it's gross sounding. Um, I'm weird but it's true that's what happens and I hate it and I also you, the other thing I don't like because like I do pull from the center from like these balls but look it's so not like it just leaves it all floppy this one is not too bad because it has more structure um I also I can't remember how much I have left over that but this look how pretty that looks you can still put it in a bowl you can put it on your on your on your inside wherever you store your things I have a I have a bookshelf I have bowls full of yarn um like this gained up and caked up and after you finish it looks so cute like it's not falling apart and it's not all tangled because that used to happen to me too like as you pull it and then it's like falling apart and it's there stangling no for a long time I've been on outside and I don't mind, I put it in a bag and it doesn't roll around anywhere. Um, I could get a yarn ball, I don't have one, but I could get a yarn ball and I'm sure it would be fine. But in reality, if I put it in my baggie, which by the way, this is by my friend Ode from uh, Bubbles and Berries, who by the way, I still need to buy one of her patterns, but she is selling now, I know, tangent, but bear with me, this is a cool thing. She just started in um, in her Etsy shop. Well, she didn't start an Etsy shop, but in her Etsy shop, she just started to sell PDF patterns of um, a lot of her like new embroidery um, patterns. Not this one, but she made two, and I think she's making more of embroidery patterns that you can just buy, like the actual PDF. And then also she has kits. But those ones will be limited. Like, you know, whenever she gets more things, then she'll put more kits up. And in all reality, I think a kit for me, it would be just too much money to make it all the way over here to the US. And when I can just print it, I have plenty of floss here and I can find my own, you know, everything else. I have hoops and I have things like that. Now, if you don't have any of those things, 
then that's great. I mean, I have markers, I have all those things that I would need. So I, for me, I would get a PDF. And I don't know which one I want yet, probably both. They're both gorgeous. So this is hers and it was from last year. It was like a Christmas um, festive that I got with yarn. So yeah, I'm gonna make some for my daughter with a leftover, there's plenty, there's like 40 grams and there's there that's plenty for an eight year old so yeah I got I did 64 stitches in 2.5 millimeters um I went 20 rounds for the ribbon 40 for the leg heel flip and gazette look at that I have portrait heel I hope I'm showing it to you it's really hard to tell <gasps> I mean that I love the I have heel it's my favorite and then when you do it with like fun colors then I do 32 uh, rows of that, and then I do 60 for my leg, and then the wedge toe. And yeah, it's all ready for me to wear, because it's still a bit, I mean, it's chilly enough that I'm still wearing wool socks. So those are my all my finished optics. We're gonna move on to whips. Now, I cast on and finished lots of things, but then there are other things that got cast on and I got to work on, and then there were some things that um, got some love that happened for a long time. I'm not showing you all the whips because some of them didn't really get touched. So there's no point. I mean, I did some more rows and my crochet blanket, like my granny stripes, but it's not enough to show you. I'm on like day 20 of my advent. So soon I'm gonna finish that and I'm gonna start adding from any other scraps that I have around my house. So let's move on to these whips. So my son, my oldest, he's obsessed with dinosaurs. And like obsessed ever since he was really little. I think he watched the old Jurassic Park, like the first one. Um, he watched that when he was about two years old and he wasn't even scared he loved it so then the other two grew up watching it too because he was always watching it he's upset like obsessed with dinosaurs ever since he could ever since i could remember he's been asking to be a paleontologist so that's what he wants to be i don't know if that's gonna happen but you know that's what he wants to be every year when at the beginning of the school year i ask him what do you want to be paleontologist it has not changed and he's obsessed i mean he's still obsessed to this day he reads about dinosaurs he has all the different dinosaurs now the new uh jurassic world movie is coming out and he's been watching that trailer and all the trailers out there a million times so my friend uh jenna lee was the one actually who makes these from the knitted saray she told me about um dyer in utah and her name is yarnaceous because she's also obsessed with dinosaurs so their ba her bases are like called after dinosaurs like the 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 basis of the yarn and a lot of the di a, a lot of them my goodness i can't say a word a lot of the names of the colorways and a lot of the colorways are based on dinosaur things like this one i got this sock set and this was from a jurassic world yarn club and I think, let me tell you what they're called. Well, this was their February color. So it won't be available anymore. So this is their Salta fingering sock set and it's 85 Superwash Merino and 15% nylon. It's very soft. It is so soft. Um, Deborah's from um, Candy, Candy Shop Yarns. It is really soft and this is even softer. Um, it's very, uh, yeah, so it's 120 grams, you get 524 yards, and the color is Surface Hunter, Surface Hunter, and the mini, I believe, is called Enclosed, which is like a dark steel blue, like, it's, it's such a pretty, it's like a gray bluish and this is also a gray bluish and together they make i mean look at that gray it's like oh it's like a silver gray blue and it has like specks of blue and this is what it's making so 
So this is after the Mosasaurus. The Mosasaurus, it's a water dinosaur. Um, water reptile, <laughs> whatever they're called. Um, I know more about dinosaurs than maybe I would ever care about. I mean, I really, I think dinosaurs are awesome. So, and yeah, I have partridge heel on this tonal is gorgeous. Let me tell you about this. So my son grew, apparently, because I have, I mean, most of the socks that I've made him are done with the Patton's Croy sock. And that one is not fingering. That one's like a sport weight. So I can do a 60, I mean 2.5, 60 stitch count and it's fine. I did that with this and this like hand dyed fingering. He tried them on, they fit, but you could tell like, they were like stretching the stitches and it wasn't comfortable in any second. He was either gonna make a hole in them or he would, um, or he would grow out of them in like a minute. So I made one, I was halfway, I was almost to the heel, or I already had done the heel. I was, no, I was almost to the heel in the second pair and I made him try one on and it's like, no. And you know, this is hand dyed yarn. It's nice. It is not cheap. I'm like, I'm gonna make something that's gonna last in more than two seconds and also that it's comfortable to wear. So I went ahead and did my count that I usually do with hand dyed yarn, which is the 64. And this is already like looking like it's gonna fit on because this is much, much more space. I restarted it yesterday and here I am and I got it quite a bit done so I picked up the gusset stitches while my daughter was reading to me today and while we were doing school so he's very happy to look looking forward to this the leftover yarn is gonna be for a pair for my youngest so who also likes dinosaurs and he he's just happy to have handmade socks that actually all of them are which also makes it that I always have to be making socks, which I'm okay with. So that was um, for my oldest son. Then let me tell you, let's move on to my catkins because I did make some progress. So I I'm gonna enter this to the cone along. I don't think you have to finish, or maybe you do. I don't know, I don't think you have to finish, but, and it doesn't have to be a cone from the Wooly, I mean, not Wooly, from Wooly Knit. I did buy this one, it's a Jameson and Smith, and I bought it through the Wooly Thistle, which is an online store here in New Hampshire, I think, in the United States. Oh, and it was so shippy. I, mm -mm, mm -mm. so good. All right. So I am making the Catkins um, pullover or like sweater by, let me make sure I say this right. So she is Polish and my friend Magda from Magda Knits. She's like, this is how you say it. And I am so grateful because I don't want to be mispronouncing people's names. So her name is Mashena Kowacek. Kowacek? Mashena Kowacek. I think that's how you say it. Magda, if I didn't say it right, please tell me again. Um, so, and she is a Polish designer. And... This is what this one looks like. It is gorgeous, okay? I absolutely love it. And I love it in the color she did it, but that was like all hand dyed yarn and it was like a specific color. And I would have had it in that color if I could. But then again, I'm like, that's a lot of money on hand dyed yarn and I, I prefer spending on other things. So as you can see, those little, that stitch right here, it's called a catkin stitch. And that's why it's called catkins. And you have that all in the front and in between you have moss stitch and the back is all moss stitch. And then on the sides, it is this gorgeous lace pattern. I think, I, think, I hope you can see it because it is beautiful. I love the sides. Okay. Now, I'm almost to the, this one is not supposed to be, uh, is not supposed to be cropped. Now, if you want it cropped or shorter, 
Um, you had to think about that before it tells you in the pattern. Like if you want it, you need to start a bit different to make sure that it ends at the same point. It all, all the details in the pattern is that is a pay pattern. And yeah, so I don't want it cropped. I want this one to be kind of like the length that she has it. And so I'm almost there. But here's the thing. I did swatch and then I started knitting and I had about, I don't know, maybe like this much, like this much. De well, no, definitely a catkin maybe. Yeah, like the bottom catkins. When I realized I didn't swatch in the round. And that's really what you want. If you're swatching, you want to swatch how you're going to knit. And I don't know what was happening to me at that moment, because I know this. I didn't swatch in the round. I swatched flat, which can give you a different gauge. And even that gauge was like, it was a bit iffy. Let's be real. Let, let's be truthful here. My swatch was not the best. But then you, okay. And then this is supposed to have positive ease. So usually I use, um, I wear an extra large. So if you wanted positive ease, you want it to go a bigger size. So I did. So now I'm thinking this is going to be really big. Well, maybe not really big. It's just going to have quite a bit of positive ease. And I did get barber cords, which is one of my acquisitions. I got him through the crazy sock lady, but in reality, no. I mean, I did it mostly because I just wanted them here soon and I got brown because the hot pinks were just too bright. <laughs> and um, if they were like light pink, oh, maybe. It's really what it is. It's it's like that kid's um, plastic cord that you can make like jewelry with. So if you go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby, you can probably, or, or any craft store where you are, you can probably buy these quite cheap. I, I think Anna from Annie Uti Knits, my friend Anna, I think she, that's what she has maybe? And somebody else that I was watching, I can't remember. But I did buy the, the barber cords. They're really great. I mean, the way that these work, sorry, I took them out and then off of my little tangent. The way that these work is that you stick them to the ends. You can use them for different things. So usually, so I like to, I like to push them in real good because then they're not going to go anywhere. So the way that this works is that you push them in and then you can try this on and it's going to go onto the, you know, and you can try it on. This is done bottom up. And usually I have no problem doing it bottom up, but this time I'm like, ah, I really don't know if this is gonna fit. And will I have enough yarn? And will I, like, there's a lot of questions. So it has gone to the knotty corner. I knit a lot of it. And then I was like, I don't know what to do. But I wanted to bring it here because it's not always perfect. Knitting is not always perfect, but you know what? At the same time, I'm like, it's just knitting. So I don't stress over it. I just went to the knotty corner and I was like, I'll, I'll talk to you later. I need to figure things out first. But yeah, so you would, you know, pull it and then you have all this room so that all the stitches don't come out. If you have, if you want to try something on, for example, or you can use them for holding stitches. So this one is the shorter one. There's two short ones like this and one long one. And for example, like in my, the green sweater that I showed you, at one point you have to put the body stitches on hold if you don't have interchangeables like i didn't i just left it in the same needles because i have small interchangeables that's how i did my 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 sleeves i just do them in small ones and but if you don't or or but i did use these the shorter ones when i had to make the other sleeve so i you put them at the end of the, your needles you pull the needle out and then these stay in and you just leave it there, which is a lot faster than getting um, scrap yarn, getting a needle, and going through every single stitch. You know, I've done that for years. I figured I think I can I can just buy these and try it out, and it's so nice. Also, then 
you grab your new needle like when you want you want to pick up those stitches for example or you just grab your needle you put the ends of this and you pull your needle through you pop this out and then you didn't have to go every stitch picking up every stitch you know what i mean yeah and then for me when i want to get them off i just kind of i just kind of break this suction with my fingernail and i just push if i am actually doing it yeah so that suction was really good which is what you want you don't want to be doing all this so then you can then you lose all your stitches that you worked so hard on so yeah so these are barber cords if you were looking i know the crazy sock lady so crazy sock lady co has them and i think she just said on instagram that she has added more to the shop all right so i don't know i wanted to show it to you because one i'm loving it it is fun to knit it is up definitely a tv knitting reading i can read and make make this the only time when i have to pay more attention is what the catkins are but that's just like one time out of the whole thing like you 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 have a lot of knitting before you get to a catkin so i think i have like one more repeat maybe before i have to um split for sleeves and then i believe you go um separate like front and then back and then i don't know exactly how you add the sleeves i don't know if you do them separately or i don't know so i'm not really sure Every time I try it on, it doesn't, I mean, it looks big, but not horrendously big, but it's really hard. Even with barber, uh, even with the barber cords, it is still hard to tell how it's going to look on. But I did want something, I did want something that is oversized and kind of um, with positive ease. So, and I also, I, I'm not afraid of ripping back. I, I could restart this. But I don't know. So I, I will let you know what I decide from here until next time. In the meantime, um, I mean, I still have quite a bit of this left over. It is 500 grams. So I should have enough to make the whole thing. And that's the other thing. I need to like weigh this and make sure that, okay, how much do I have left? Because it is supposed to be a long sleeve. Um, it is fingering weight. So it takes a while and it doesn't help when you just when you're not sure what you want to do but yeah i wanted to let you know one that there was a lot of knitting so i put actually a marker right here that's where i was the last time we talked so i've done more than half and that one says i uh knit like knit like mrs Whistley. My friend generally gave me that one. This one, oh, last time I showed you these. These are great. Um, they have been awesome. And it is a sweet acre creation. My friend Mia, she started this shop. And it's really cute. It's really sturdy. So yeah, I'll let you know what I end up doing about this. I'm not 100% sure yet. As you can see, um, I haven't made a decision. I figured I would come up here and maybe the decision would come while I was talking to you. Well, maybe you will. So deep down, I want to keep going. So that's where I'm at. That's all I can say. All right. Let's move on to the other whip. This is not oldie, but a goodie. And I also wanted to show you a new acquisition. I did finally buy this bag. So you know that I have the B1 and I've been wanting Nikki. This is, that's her name. The hedgehog, the sh bleh, hedgehog, hedgehog, for a long time, and this is from the Blue Rabbit House. And you probably, if you have been here from the beginning, that you probably remember this. But this is my daughter's shawl that I've been making. It's gonna, you're not gonna be able to even see it. But I just wanted to to show you one that it's okay if you have a whip from a long time. I think I started this in 2020, maybe um or maybe last year i cannot remember and it's gonna be a square shawl which you cannot tell right now because even though these are very long needles it is still a very big but i finally finished picking up the stitches i don't mind picking up stitches 
Oh, when you're picking up like so many stitches, <laughs> the whole border, it's picked up like in that cream color. And this is done in a uh, Holst Super Soft. At the beginning, it's not super duper soft as it calls for, but it's also not that. I would say that Jameson and Smith was less soft than this one. I don't find it that, I, but I also like rustic wool. Yeah, I mean, you touch it, it's not like a merino, but it's also not super, super um, coarse. And it's not itchy at all. And yeah, so this is the Ecru color. Yeah, which is the off-white. And then the other one is called Sunrise, the yellow. And before you pick up stitches for the border, you are supposed to wash this. And this had a lot of spinning oil. That's how they sell Holst. They sell it with a lot of spinning oil. And I washed it a lot and it's super soft now it doesn't even smell like the spinning oils anymore and it is so soft and it's such a pretty yellow and when, when i pulled it out the other day i mean i haven't touched this in months when i pulled it out the other day my daughter's like my shawl you're finally working on it so now i'm like i really need to finish this and now that all the stitches are picked up and i just need to do the border now i'm like oh this is actually so fun which i love so this is the Poopery Show by Fox and Fook, my friend Nora. And um, everything that Nora makes is just magical. And I love it. I actually do love the pattern. It's just the picking up the stitches. It like kept me from doing it. And also all the other shiny things that you can go and um, cast on sometimes gets you. But um, I, don't, I don't stress over it because I am a finisher. You also need to know yourself, I guess. I am a finisher. I don't have things there forever and ever. I I finish things because I, I enjoy I enjoy the process of knitting, but I also want the, the, the finished product. And I'm also kind of like a finisher of things. Like I, I do finish things. So for my personality, it works to cast on things because I know they're gonna get done. And for and also because my stash is somewhat smaller than other people. I can't just cast on all the things because I don't have the yarn for it. So if I don't want to spend the money, that stops me from uh, from casting on all the things. I mean, I have some for socks, but you know, a sock project is not a big deal. I finished those in a few days. Um, so yeah, so now I'm on the on the border, which is also going to be um, lace. And my daughter is so very excited. And this is going to be housed in Nikki. Uh, with, I actually had my my green sweater in it, so my di diagonally. But now that that's finished, this has gotten a permanent home. And hopefully next time I can show you more details. And I did buy these. This was supposed to be part of an acquisition, but now here I am jumping all over the place. Um, I got these little, I mean, look how adorable that is. Um, they're quite dangerous, so you have to keep that but they're a little tiny but they're very sharp and uh about two and they're inexpensive but they're very good and, and sharp and you can just throw them in a bag and like that you have scissors which is so nice okay so i'll show you that 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 let me show you one more thing just one last whip that i'm actually i have been working on and this one i'm excited because i've been wanting to make it since last year and I showed you last time that I had cast on just the uh, another Sweet Acorns Creations bag and one that she gifted me. And look at this. So let me see if I can show you. And if not, if it's not good, I will make a close up of this one because I want to be able to show you really good, really well. So I started my sea glass tee. This is not the sea glass sweater, like a lot of people are making right now. That one's with DK. This is the sea glass tee. That is a short sleeve, or you can make a long sleeve if you want. And um, and this is all with fingering scraps. And I am so excited about it. Um, I casted it on and I hadn't touched it for days. And then last night I was like, let's work some more on it. 
because it is actually really fun. And um, okay, so this is a paid for pattern. It has a lot of good videos. It has information. Um, it has all sorts of information. And it, and it tells you about different ways of of doing it. So you can either do a whole one color as the main color and then you change every row because you change every row. This is one by one color work. And you change every row the different, like the color. I mean, actually you don't have to. If you wanted like stripes, then you don't have to, but that's not what I wanted. It is meant to be one on one, one by one color work and you're, you're meant to change at least one of the colors every, every row. Now, some people do, I think Kay from Sick, uh, the Crazy Sock Lady, she's doing the sweater and she has like a grayish color, I think, as her main color and then all the other colors she's switching. Um, I did one that do that. I wanted to do a different color every single row. So both colors are different every row. And that, this is exactly, it's looking exactly what I wanted it to look like. Like this is, this is so good. I'm doing the size five. And I'm using the recommended needles. I did not swatch for this. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But it is done bottom down. I mean, top down. So I can go try it. I can be trying it on as I go. And I usually hit gauge too. So it's not, I mean, as I, as I talked about the catkins for forever. But I usually do. So I'm not too worried. And this is exactly what I wanted. This this is looking so good i put it in barber quartz i mean it's barely like to here now but i put it to barber in barber quartz last night just to put it on and i'm like this is making me so happy like it it really brings me joy now let's talk about the joint and how and what i've decided to do about joining those those yarns because you're probably thinking you're changing colors every single row you would have a million ends and you would, depending on what you're doing. Now, I know Kay is, um, she's weaving in ends, which I don't mind weaving in ends. And she's weaving in ends, like, kind of almost as she goes. Like, she does a big section, and then she weaves in all those ends, and then she does another section, and she weaves in ends. So then at the end, she doesn't have to do it all. Um, so I did that for the top part. So this is the back. So where you're weaving ends is the very back. So I did it until about here. And it gives you a very stiff section. You'll be you're pulling a lot because you're trying to get it all I don't know. All without holes and stuff. So it does give you like you can you can feel it. You can feel it. It doesn't look terrible. The inside looks kind of like this, kind of a little messy. But overall, it's not horrendous. So I did that for a bit. But here's the thing. It is not just one end. You have four ends by the time that you finish one row. Because you have the two ends of the color at the beginning. Then you have the two ends of the color at the end. So every row you end up with four ends. So that is a lot of ends to put in in a very small section with, with very thin yarn. So I didn't like how that was and how much it was, you know, I didn't like it. So I, I tried that first before I did the magic knot. And I said, you know what? They did the magic knot. They called it the best for them. I watched Zoe from Felicity Yarn Studios. She has, I think I'm gonna find it and I'll put it down below with the name of this pattern. This is called the Seagoss Tea by uh, Wool and Pine. And um, Zoe, she did it a beautiful one. And I talked to her in way back last year when I wanted to make this one. And she did a combination of both, but I think most of the time she did Magic Knot. And hers turned out beautiful. So Magic Knot, if you haven't seen it, you can go look for a tutorial. But that means you're joining before and then you're knitting along. So then you don't have to weave in ends at the end. And now I've been doing that from like this, this down and I like it. Sometimes a magic knot, it's gonna be out. Like you can see some here and I'll, I'll, 
I'll get close up. I think you can see some of them. They are sticking out. You can probably push them in a bit and then you can, you know, see if it'll, they'll go in. But in all reality, I really don't care. It kind of gives the character from far away. I mean, can you even see them? You can't see them. You can feel them a bit. Um, but this is a better option. I really like it. It doesn't give you a like a really hard fabric. It It's a lot easier and a lot faster to tell the truth than weaving the ends. So that's happening. Also, one of the testers used this, which is Freight Check. If you, if you sew, then you have probably used this or seen it. And and stops fraying in, in, in the fabric, but with this, it also gives you, it's not glue, but it's almost like it kind of gives you an extra protection on those magic knots. So maybe they won't like fall apart because that would be like the worst thing ever. Um, so, and some people, I mean, they've been using their, 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 theirs for years or however long it's been out and they've been using them and they don't they don't have a problem like they haven't had some and I do pull really well like really good so that's my plan this is also a long project it's kind of like a scrappy blanket it is a scrappy tee I'm not in a hurry I don't mind how long it'll take to make and the combination of the colors is really fun. I am not really planning my colors. The only thing that I am is that I like to have a light and a darker color together. So for example, I think this latest, I did this. And I like to try to alternate. So if the previous, if the previous row had dark light, dark light, that this one will be light dark, light dark. You know, so I, I try to do it as often as possible. Um, I also sometimes have some rows that have low contrast and that's totally fine. I don't mind a low contrast row. I don't think every single row has to be super bright. So it kind of just, I don't plan it. I just kind of grab two colors and be like, oh, okay, I haven't done a color like this for a while. And I just kind of grab it and go. So I don't know, what do you guys think? I, I am loving it. So yeah, that's what's happening there. And I'm excited to add some more colors today to this. And yeah, anything else I wanted to tell you about this? No, I think that's it. Let's move on to acquisitions. All right, so let's move on to acquisitions. Um, I probably am forgetting something. I already showed you the barbecue uh, cords and these, I got them also from the Crazy Sock Lady. Even though this is super bright pink, they make me happy. So that was happening. But let's talk about this. Yes, these are cones from Wooly Knit. And yes, I did order them all the way from Scotland, not, not Scotland, from um, England. Rebecca is from Scotland. Oh my gosh, and they smell seriously so shapey. It makes me so happy. I mean, look at this beauty. So this is their cinnamon brown color, which I know many of you have seen many times. I don't have anything attached to this yet, though um, there is a sweater that it's being tested right now by fiber tails that is done in fingering weight that could be an option for this but I, it, i'm not sure yet this one and then this one i was thinking of no frills i have oh i need to swatch though to make sure that i like the fabric and what it looks like because i would want to this is pink i'm oh, sorry this is rose pink mix color 1038 and it's really pink it's like a bubble bubblegum pink I don't I don't mind this color but I would prefer it a tiny bit less bright maybe um so I want to see how it looks like with a off-white mohair 
and see what kind of like it will mute it down or I think I have a pink mohair and see how that looks it might just still look adorable and super cute and I was thinking of a no frills now here's the thing with no frills and it goes up to 3x I do have the pattern it goes up to 3x but you're supposed to have it with I mean not supposed to but if you want it to look anything like it does for the um, like the like it's meant to like what it does on the pictures it's supposed to have a little bit of positive positive ease and her patterns are not super duper size inclusive i would say so if i want to make it i think i have to go to like a 2x or even all the way to the biggest size to make it with a positive ease that is saying I need to look again. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm not sure if I want to do that. But at the same time, I kind of do. I do want to make it. And even if it doesn't have tons of positive ease, it is a beautiful, beautiful sweater with a beautiful look and, and looks like a great fit. So even if it's not super positive ease, I don't mind. So I need to go and look and be like, okay, which size do I really want to make? And swatch and see which one I like. But I think that's going to be in pink because... I do like pink yeah and even though a new fr no frills on this would look super gorgeous too but I think I want to make something where I can let this color shine a hundred percent because the color like this color is so beautiful it has a little bit of yellow greenish and the orange rust and a little bit lighter orange color I mean, it's really hard to be able to like get it all in camera that I don't want to pair a mohair with this and then lose some of that color. So this one, I don't mind so much because, you know, it's just pink. I mean, which is cute. I think this is a pretty pink, but I don't know. Oh, I put this on backwards. So yeah, so those are the two acquisitions. Let's talk about how much did I spend on this? And I don't always talk about money on on the podcast and um but if you're interested in knowing some of like how much some things cost then i'm happy to share and sometimes i do i do share so for like new today it all depends it ends up being about 17 to 18 dollars per plate which is not bad it's really not bad it's 100 i mean 100 grams it's hand dyed it's all rustic and natural um now if you start adding to the, to the part that i you know i do pay patrons every for every month um and then it does have like it's a good amount in shipping probably between 20 and 30 dollars shipping you know and i buy that's why i try to buy a huge amount and also that's why i don't buy every month i i do it for specific projects and that's also why I don't just buy the new today. And I buy it with a project in mind. Um, so then I can get the right amount. And if I have leftover, then it's great. I have leftover from a bunch from other projects, which means, hey, that's gonna go towards something later. I'm not really sure what, but it will go so towards something. So I'm not really sure how that's gonna, um, so that's kind of the idea, but that is to the US. Now, I don't know, it all depends on how it converts in your money and how much shipping that is to your country. I wanna say it's between 20 and $30 probably shipping. I think so, I can't remember. When I go there, I just, I just go blind. I'm just like, I know I'm gonna spend about this much and then I just spend it. Now this, uh, the cones are awesome. The price went up a tiny bit to like 20 pounds per cone. It used to be like 18 pounds something. Uh, but demand, you know, supply and demand. Um, also, there's still a 20% coupon from Korea Bear. So Korea Bear 20, I think gives you a 20% coupon and I think it's good until the 24th. So if you wanna try, this is the time. Second, I only got two cones because they're not light. I mean, these are 50, 500 grams and 500 grams. That is a whole kilo of yarn. And then, you know, the parcel and, I mean, they came in like a light envelope, but still. 
So then what did I pay for shipping? I paid about 30, I can't remember if it's 35 or $37 shipping. But if you add that, I think the whole total that I spent, I spent like $75 maybe with like when you add everything, it was about that much or so. Now, the Jameson and Smith cone that I got from the Woolly Thistle, which is a, it comes all, I mean, the, the Jameson and Smith comes all the way from Scotland to the Woolly Thistle and then the Woolly Thistle sells it. When that one costs $62.50, $62.50 from the Woolly Thistle. If you spend $130, I think, from the Woolly Thistle, you get free shipping. Otherwise, it's $9 flat. So we're talking about about over seven, like about 71, 72, we're depending on tax. Okay, let's do a 75 flat $74 from the Woolly Thistle by the time that you buy um, at one cone. I pay that for two cones. So at the end of the day, I still got a good deal. I got the same amount of yarn. It's a different yarn because this is like British breeds. It's a combination. The other one is 100% uh, Shetland wool. Um, this is soft. This is, I think it's very soft. I don't think this is softer than Jamie's and Smith or, um, yeah, it's softer than that. It's softer than this. Yeah, a little softer than this, not tons. Um, not as soft as the Merino, which is the other one I was going to show you. But, you know, I think this is very soft. This is skin soft to me. And, but I can, you know, I like rustic yarns, but this is 100%. Oh, I'm just so happy with this. Can I make this purchase all the time? No, I can't because it's still, you know, a good amount of money and shipping. I hate paying for shipping, but at the same time, it is far away. So you have to, you have to decide whether you want to spend that. Now, I know some people, depending on where you live, that shipping is even more expensive. So then it's really not a good deal. Um, I know that if you buy more cones, the shipping's gonna go up a lot more. My mother-in-law ended up buying four cones. I can't remember how much she ended up paying for shipping, but, um, it was a little bit more. And now we wish that we would have bought them together. I should have done it. Um, but yeah, that's my, those are my thoughts on those and kind of like, future knitting. This is from a new YouTuber that um, she also is starting dyeing. And oh, this is so squishy soft. This is a 7525. It's 460 yards. And um, this is called Agatha. And it is from Mystery Mouse Yarn Company. Look how pretty that is. So she's doing um based on books she's she loves reading she's a homeschool mom actually she lives here in the u.s her name is holly and she started a youtube channel called mystery mouse knitting actually that's one of the recommendations of podcasts that um i was gonna tell you about she's really sweet she has five kids four or five kids i can't remember she also homeschools and she loves knitting and um yeah, she started dying. This one's called Agatha. It's for Agatha Christie. And can you believe, I've never read any of the Agatha Christie books. I do love watching all the shows that are based on her books, but I, it's a goal this year of reading Agatha Christie books. Um, so yeah, so this is a very pretty color and it's very squishy and very soft. And I think this is going to become another Mosobora hat. So that's that plan. And the last but not least, look what came in the mail. I love it. I don't buy a lot of magazines or books. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna sneeze. Oh, this yarn sniffing, this is what gets you. All right, um, I don't buy tons of them because um, nowadays I do use, I don't use paper um, patterns. I do them all on my phone. So, um, but this was just too beautiful to pass. I needed to be able to, to look through it and read all the things in it. 
And there are several ones that I want to make, but the one that I will be making soon. Oh la la, where is it? Of course, now I can't find it. Oh, there it is. It's this one. I mean, the beauty. It is Plumatis. Plumatis. Um, I don't know how to say it. And it is gorgeous. And I already bought the yarn because uh, Knitting for Olive was doing one of the days in February was um, all the proceeds were going to go to, um, I think, the Red Cross to help Ukraine. So I wanted, I mean, this was in my to make list this year. Anyways, I knew the moment I saw it that I had to make it. And I knew that I was going to buy the yarn at some point, but it wasn't yet because I wasn't going to make it yet. But then, you know, they were very gracious and to, um, so I was like, okay, then I'm going to buy the yarn. When I get the yarn, it hasn't gotten here yet, but when I get the yarn, I will let you know and I will show it to you. I think it's called, it's like a pinkish color, of course, um, flamingo or something like that. I don't know. And there are other ones that I want to make from this. The cool thing of Pom Pom though that I really like is that at the beginning of the, I'm not going to show it to you, but at the beginning, like the the front cover, there is a code. So you can go to Ravelry if you can use Ravelry and you can put that code in and then you get the whole magazine into your library on Ravelry, which means you get all the digital uh, patterns, which is great because knitting from this magazine, it's like horrendous. It doesn't even open and I don't wanna crease it. I mean, I like, you know, I like looking at it, but it's not gonna stay open as you're knitting. Unless you'd really want to like push it, and then it doesn't look so pretty. But I will be knitting from the PDF. But then you can still look at this and keep it beautiful, and read all the things about it, and it's gorgeous. So that is this one, and I think those are all my acquisitions and my dream knitting. So let's finish up with the podcast recommendations. I have four for you today. Uh, the first one is Casey. Casey is the maker be behind Young Folk Knits, and she has a podcast here and a beautiful Instagram. She is from Arkansas, and she is lovely. I had not heard of her before. She's somewhat newish. I think she started last year, and I don't remember where I heard about her, but I went ahead and checked her her podcast, and I loved her from the moment I watched her podcast. First of all, her Southern accent, I love it. Second, she's a beekeeper. I wanna have bees someday. And she lives like on a farm, which is what I want. So I'm like, mm, Casey, I'm just living, living through you. Um, she makes beautiful things and she's just sweet at So go check out Casey, she's great. Um, the other one is Anna from the Blue Board bluebird box and you have heard me talk about her um she is an amazing designer and she started a podcast a few months ago and she's the sweetest she lives in alberta canada and she also has a farm way colder though there's arkansas which is like way warmer most of the time and then there is alberta canada which is just way too cold for me she lives there with her kids and she makes beautiful designs. And if you haven't checked her out, you need to. And now you get to hear the stories behind these designs and to kind of like understand where her designing comes from. And I really do appreciate designers who have podcasts. I really enjoy hearing that side of, of the making, which is, it, it's very foreign to me because I don't design. So it's really fun. The third one is Holly, the one I tell you about, the mystery mouse knitting. And like I said, she is a mom. I cannot remember where she lives. She lives in the US, but I cannot remember where she's from. But 
Yes, she is great. And the last one is Liza, the Woolblum Knitting Podcast. And she is from South Africa. And she is really, really sweet. Um, she also is making beautiful things. And if you want inspiration of summer things, go check her out. Because right now it's summer. Well, they're getting into autumn soonish. Um, but she has <clears throat> all her latest things have been summer knits. And so if you want inspiration on summer knits, then go check her out because that's what she's been doing for the past few months. So those are my recommendations. I hope you have a wonderful week and rest a good weekend. I will continue praying for all the hardships that are out there. And I hope that your heart felt a little bit better during this time with me. And I wish you the best. Happy meeting, friends. Bye.